Welcome to Miss Lovedell's video on understanding density. Before we get started, make sure you have your supplies. You're going to need your science notebook, a pencil, and some colored pencils. Are you ready? Okay, let's get started. The objectives of this video are to help you understand density of matter, how to calculate density, and how to use density to identify substances. So what is density? Well, first of all, it's a physical property of matter, which means that it describes the amount of matter in a given space. Now, when you hear the word amount, think mass. And mass, in this case, is going to be measured in or expressed in grams, sometimes kilograms, but most of the time we're going to use grams. And when you hear the word space, think volume. And in this case, volume is going to be expressed as cubic centimeters. So a cubic centimeter is exactly what it says it is. It's a cube that is exactly one centimeter on all three sides, so it's the amount of material that can fit into a cube. So I apologize for my drawing skills here. In real life, we kind of have an intuitive sense of what density is. For example, if you think about a golf ball and a ping pong ball, if you throw those in water, you know the golf ball is going to sink. Even though golf balls and ping pong balls are about the same size or about the same volume, the golf ball is denser, and that's why it sinks. The ping pong ball is less dense, and that's why it floats. Remember back to plate tectonics when we studied oceanic and continental crust? Well, the reason that oceanic crust sinks below continental crust is because of density. Oceanic crust is more dense than continental crust, and so that's what causes it to sink below the continent and be subducted. Everybody knows that ice floats, and that's because of density. Oil and water don't mix, and not only do they not mix, but oil will float on top of the ocean, which makes it easier to clean up oil spills, and you have to shake salad dressing to get that oil and water to mix together. But if you let it separate out, then the oil would sit on top of that vinegar and water. So we know that hot air balloons rise because hot air is less dense than the surrounding air. So how is density used in real life? Well, one idea that's out there lately is this concept of mixed waste recycling, where instead of separating out your recyclables, you put everything into the trash and it's taken to a recycling facility where they separate it out. And one of the ways that they separate the bottles from the cans, from the paper, from everything else, is based on density. Another thing that we all know about is shown here, on this stage. We've got all of this dry ice or carbon dioxide gas making this awesome effect on the stage. Well, the reason that gas is not floating up into the air, it kind of hugs the stage and sort of rolls off probably down here into the audience, is because CO2 is heavier than air, so it sinks. We calculate density using a really simple formula. D, for density, is equal to the mass divided by the volume. Make sure you write this um, formula down. In the Duncan for Density lab, we modeled how changing the amount of matter in a container changes the density of an object. So our containers were these cool little film canisters, and we used paper clips to represent matter. When we changed the number of paper clips that went into our little containers, that changed the density of the film canister. So for example, one little paper clip inside that film canister represented an object that is less dense than another container where it was packed full of paper clips, so that obviously would be more dense. You can try this at home with some common materials that you might have in your house. Cotton balls, rice, sprinkles. Here's a canister that is full of cotton balls. Here's another canister that's full of honey. Yum. And here's a canister that is full of sprinkles. So what's going to happen when we put those objects in water? Well, if it's less dense, then that object is going to float. So this one is our canister full of cotton. And obviously, look how high that's floating up here in that water. Very, very high. And objects that are more dense are going to sink. So this is our honey. And you can see it has sunk completely to the bottom of this bowl of water. 
Well, that brings us to the end of our video. Make sure you have these vocabulary words in your notes. Density, mass, volume, grams, cubic centimeters. Don't forget your three R's. Review your notes, do a reflection, and respond to this question. Explain why a golf ball sinks and a ping pong ball floats in water, even though the balls are approximately the same size or the same volume. For more information on this video or some more details, you can check out these links, and they're all on the Love Doll Science page as well on YouTube. Thanks for watching.